Okay. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining me today. Um, I am going to be recording this, as I mentioned a moment ago. Um, you guys will have the opportunity to ask questions, um, but had a few people who couldn't make it today, so I'll be sending this to video, um, the video to them as well. Um, so as we go through this, I may talk about a couple of things that may not apply to you, um, your organization directly, but I'm doing it for the sake of some other people who might be watching it, but I'll highlight that. So let me see if I can share my screen. That's always the fun part. Let's see. Um, if I'm going to get in. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Not. Okay, great. Um, and when, I don't know if you guys have done these little presentations, but the chat feature doesn't work very well. I don't get to see it. So as I'm going through this, um, please just interrupt me. If you have a question, you know, we, we all know each other. We're all good. So just interrupt as we go. So if you've been to, you know, the um, community tenants development workshop that I do in February, or even even some of the Southern annual meetings, you've probably heard the acronym CGPG. So that stands for Community Growth and Participation Grant. Um, in the past, this grant has been really kind of based off of membership. And so the CTAs that could apply, they had a service area based upon their membership and the counties that they serve basically for the league program. And most of you who are watching this right now kind of fell into those service areas. And so you were not allowed to apply for this grant because the multiplier for the funding was done by membership and you know you couldn't claim membership that someone else was claiming but we've had a big change um and those are what we're going to go over today and based on those changes you guys are now eligible to apply if you'd like to do so so let's just talk about the grant sum so mm -hmm. this grant was designed to increase participation in tennis and strengthen the relationship between the local tennis associations and the USTA. What is so great about this grant, it is unique to the Southern section. When I talk to some of my um, cohorts from other sections and I tell them about this grant, they're always amazed and, and they love it because it really is a great mechanism of moving funds down to the local level. So how this grant is funded is 75% of the funds come from Southern, and 25% come from each of the states. Um, Southern is the one who administers this grant. They're in charge of it. So anytime there's any changes or they update the uh, application, that all comes from the Southern section. There's a special subcommittee on CGPG that does all that stuff. Now, that being said, they do reach out to the states and talk to us and get our, our input and, and, and everything. Um, but it is a joint funded. So 75% by Southern, 25% by each of the state. And as I mentioned a moment ago with these new changes, uh, a lot of CTAs now that haven't been eligible to apply are going to be able to apply. So let's click here. And for some reason, my screen is not advancing. There it goes. Okay, so some details about the grant. And just so you know, we're going to go over um, parts of the actual application itself. We're going to go over, there's a whole calculation spreadsheet of how the amount of funds you could potentially be eligible for is done. So we'll go over all, all of that as well. Um, you'll see when we do the application, um, there are different um, categories that you can use the funding for. Uh, and one of those categories happen to be marketing. And one of the rules that we have for the grant is for whatever amount you're eligible for, 20% of that funding must be used for marketing, okay? That can be, you know, logo items, that can be for your website, um, all kinds of different things follow under the you know, banners, under the marketing umbrella. Um, now, you can use 100%. For marketing that's fine too but at a minimum 20 percent must be used for marketing so the grant cycle runs from november 1st through october 31st so for this grant coming up that you'll be eligible to apply for the dates are going to be november 1st of 2020 through october 31st of 2021 um, 
If you choose to um, apply, you'll let me know. I'll go over some more of that in a second. And then I will send you out the application and the grant calculation form early November. Now it's a pretty, pretty quick turnaround, especially because we have Thanksgiving in there and everything, but the applications are due to me no later than December 1st. Now everything's done online. Um, so that, that's good, but you will have to upload some information. And when I go over the actual application with you, you'll see some of that stuff I'm talking about. Um, so what happens then is after December 1st, um, I review everything and you're free to submit this before December 1st. So whenever I, I send out the application, as soon as you get it done, you can go ahead and submit it. Um, the earlier, the better, because if I do have any questions, I'll have to go back to you. And because um, I have to turn around about a week after December 1st, I have to have it to Southern. Um, what happens then, the Southern Review Committee, they actually do work over the holiday. Um, and they try to get it ready to be approved by the Southern Board in January. If all goes well. I usually have the checks in hand by the time for um, our February CTBW. So I usually give those out at that meeting. Um, we'll take a pretty little picture with a, one of the checks that we write the amount on and all that kind of good stuff. So funding will go out in February of 2022. So sample grant applications. Let me do a new share here so I can pull this up. Sample grant application and share. Okay, so I just want to go through this. This is actually last year's application. I try to get a copy of what the new one's going to look like. They haven't quite got it all finalized, but for the most part, it's all going to be the be the same. I'll, I'll tell you which sections aren't going to be there, but we'll kind of give you the idea, the, the kind of information that you'll need to have and also some things some prep work you'll need to do. So that you see the first thing, are you registered online? Um, you, all you guys should already be. If not, I will double check that and let you know. Um, don't read this next part because this is how funding was done last time. So we'll get to that in a second. This is a great one here. So no matter what you qualify for, and I said, we'll go over that calculation form soon. But let's say you only qualify based on that spreadsheet for $300. Well, the fact that you are eligible to apply for this grant and that you went through the process of applying, a minimum amount of $500 is going to be awarded. So again, if the calculation form sheet says you only get two or $300, at a minimum, you will get 500. So that's a really good thing to know. Um, so the deadline is, is December 1st, but it's 2021. So this next part is the part that's not gonna change. At least they haven't told me it's go going to change. But so this all should be the same. So first one, just your CTA name, state where you're registered. Cause remember this is a Southern grant. So we have to make sure we put in Georgia. Um, none of you on the call um, sh shouldn't matter. So you're all pretty central located in the state. But in case anyone's watching this, if you're on the border of one of the other states, because I know sometimes a person in the CTA will actually live in another state, make sure you put Georgia in here, because um, otherwise it goes to another person to review. Um, naming who's filling this out, the email, primary phone, CTA address, this should be where the, the checks get mailed to. CTA website address, um, USTA organizational number. So this is your, your organizational membership for the CTA, and that should be um, current through the end of 2022. So right now they changed it, um, that the organizational memberships are free, so there's no cost. Um, so you just need to make sure that your, your um, USTA organizational membership is current. Um, I can pull a report for that and I will let you know if you tell me you're planning on applying if you don't know. So I can give you that information, but I can't renew it for you. That has to be someone um, from your CTA that does that. Tax ID number. So we definitely would need that. Um, that'll be on your 990. Um, tax exempt status, there'll be a little drop down menu. Um, this is a PDF, so I can't actually do it. But you know, if you're a 501c3, a 501c4, uh, we have some C7s and C9s in our state. So just, just whatever your, your, your exempt status is. Which 99, 990 form was submitted? 
So this is very important. You will have to upload a copy of your 990. So whether you did the full 990, you did a 990 EZ form, you know, if your budget's under 50,000 and you did the 990N, the postcard, whatever it is, you're going to have to upload that. So now's a good time to double check with your, your, your treasurer or whoever and make sure that you have submitted your 990. Um, your gross income, again, this will be for 2021. Remember, this is last year's application. Uh, if you filed the 990 regular, the easy form, um, you will get that gr gross income number from the 990. They should match. I will verify that because again, you will have uploaded a copy of your 990. So I will be able to see it when I review the application. If you did the 990 in, um, obviously the, um, the budget's not on that. So you will have to um, supply that number and I'll just have to take your word for it. Uh, community development workshop date. You know, this year we were virtual. Um, so you can just put in one of the dates, like the, the first date that we did um, the social media was March 17th. So you can put in that, if you forget, just put in a date, I will correct it for you. Uh, workshop location, you can just put online or virtual because that's what we did this year. Again, if you forget, I will correct that part. That's, that, that's no, no big deal. I, I know the list of everyone who's participated. So now part two, the board of directors. So you just have to list everyone, your president, um, you know, the president's going to be the same person next year. You can just put an X. If you have a new president come in, you can put their name. If you're going to be um, changing officers and you don't know, because you have to wait on your election or whatever, you can just put um, TBD to be determined. That's, that's not a problem. Um, so you have to do your president, your vice president, your secretary, your treasurer, and then on the other is just any other board members you have, you can actually list more than one person um, in each field if you need to. Um, so just, you got four different slots here to do other five. Um, then if you have a junior team tennis coordinator or adult league coordinator, you can put their names here. If you don't just put in a, if you have other staff, um, you know, like if you have an executive director or you have a, a fundraiser coordinator, just list them all the way there. Okay, so here's where we start getting into a little bit of the, the ground, grant accountability part. So this part, the first thing here is, you know, amount received basically the year before. For everyone on this call, uh, it's your first time applying. So it's going to be zero. Now, if you're watching this and you applied last year, you would put the money that the, the amount that you got last year in this field. The next field is the amount unspent from the grant. Now, typically, our CTAs have been really good. They get money, they spend it on what they're supposed to be. The last year was crazy uh, with the pandemic. So I know there are some people who are going to have a little bit of money that they unspent from last year. So this is where you'll put that money. The 2019 total unspent and the total amount of the grant received. So again, if this is your first time applying, that's all going to be zeros. So you're, 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 you're fine. Grant accountability. Again, for those who are applying the first time, you're not going to have to do this accountability part. You're just going to put zero or NA in each of these fields. Um, but I am going to go over it really quick for those who may be watching this who did apply last year. So you will need to go in here. Um, the first thing is asking your percent, um, percent spent on marketing. So when I send you this link to apply, I'm also going to send you the last year's application that you completed. So all you have to do is go at the very end of that application from last year, look at your spending plan, and all that information should be here. Um, because that's, you told me that's how you're going to spend the money. That's what you've been approved to spend. If you made a change, you should have already reached out to me and we've discussed this and you can reflect those changes here. But pretty much 95% of you is going to be exactly the same as the spending plan. For the new people, we will go over the spending plan for the new money right after, the, after this accountability section. So percent spend on money, remember it has to be at least 20%. So last year, if you said, 
you spent a hundred percent of marketing, you would just put a hundred percent here. You would, if you got $2,000, you'd put $2,000 here. And then for the description, you would tell me how you spent it, which again, looking last year's application, all of it should be right there. You can really pretty much copy and paste it back into this as long as you did exactly what you, you were saying. Um, a mistake a lot of people make that get to this accountability part and they get to the amount spent on marketing and they'll put you know $10,000 because that might have been what they spent as an organization on marketing. That's not what we're looking for here. This is only the accountability for the grant that you got. So again, that example, if you got $2,000 last year and you spent it all in marketing, $2,000 is all that needs to go here. So now you just kind of see some of these other categories that I was talking about earlier, you know, percent, um, percent spent on training, then you have to put the exact amount and then the description on training. So this is like money. If you have, you know, I give everyone a scholarship to come to our CTDW, one per organization. But if you have some more people who are coming or if that scholarship didn't cover all the expenses, you can use that um, money here. Um, if you're going, if you want to send some of your pros to get certified, you know, that's a training expense that can be used here as well. So any type of training, you can use it under this category here. Programming, if you're doing anything for any of your programming, any funding that you want to use for it. Um, equipment, if you need to get some new rackets, some new balls, um, that, that's fine. That can be used under the equipment category. Uh, next, you see facility improvement. If you want to buy benches for one of your um, facilities, the courts, or you know, contribute a little money to um, either scorecards or windscreens, that's totally fine. Uh, the last category is other. So pretty much anything that didn't fall into those, you can use it here. Now, one thing I will caution you about, and um, this is for uh, both old and new people. Uh, again, this was the accountability point part. So you've already said what it was gonna do last year, but when you're planning, you're doing your proposed planning, which is the next section. The strongest applications are ones that have a good mix of the categories um, of either the marketing, the programming, the training, or the equipment. We don't like to see just 20% for marketing and then the other one for other, and the other is like, we want to throw a party for our captains. You know, if you want to do a little bit of money for that, okay, we can let it slide, but we want to make sure these, these applications are strong. And that's the kind of stuff when I review it, if I have a question or I'm a little bit concerned about the strength of your application, I will reach out to you and discuss that with you. So that's the accountability section. So again, if you're new, that was just all zero in NA for you. So now we get to the proposed budget plan for, for the, it will be for 2022, obviously. Again, this is last year's application. Everyone completes this, okay? So if you're new or old, you will be doing this. So grant amount requested. You will get this from the calculation form that we will go over in a little bit because that calculation form tells you exactly how much money you're eligible for. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've had someone, they're eligible for, let's say $1,000 and they put in here, grant amount requested $10,000. Yeah, that's great. I wish I had that to give you, but uh, that's not what I can do. So it has to be exact amount on the calculation form. So then this amount here is what we will base the rest of this proposed plan on. So um, amount unspent from 2020 or 2021. So if you did have a, any money again for the old people left over, you would put it here. So you get the total. So now at least 20% of the money has to be spent on marketing or you can do a hundred percent. So again, tell me that if we're working with a thousand dollars, let's say that's what you qualify for 20%, that'd be at least $200. Are you going to do the whole thousand here? And then again, tell me what you're using the marketing on. Tell me what percentage you want to do on training, what that amount comes up to be. Give me some descriptions on the training. We have our programming fields. We have our equipment fields again. We have our facility improvement again. And we have our other again, okay? So those are the, the buckets of money that once we 
get that calculation form done. And it tells you how much you're eligible for. This is how you're going to tell me how you're going to spend it. So again, the calculation form only says, comes up with $300. You're going to get 500 because that's the minimum. So you would need to tell me how you're going to spend that $500. You also see right here, upload the 990 form and any other required documents. So that's where you're going to have to upload your file 990. So it's very important to get those. Um, just a side note, if you do um, have filed that 990 in, most of the time you get an email confirmation. So you can either save that email as a document or you can copy and paste all that, put it in a Word document, save it and upload it that way. Um, again, if you run into a problem and you can't upload it for some reason, just reach out to me and I'll walk you through it. We'll, we'll get that taken care of. So before I move on, that's the actual physical application that you'll, you'll have to complete. Are there any questions about that? Are you thinking about the particular categories or the amount of money or entering your staff or your board members? I want to take silence as it's okay. So uh, we try I to have a question. Huh? Yes, please. It's Shaquetta. Hey. Um, so if we say we put in the calculation and the calculation gives us the minimum through says 300, but we're going to get five. Correct. When it says how much we should put in, we actually put the 500 in or the 300? You put the 500 back up here. It said when it asked you how much grant amount requested, you put 500 mm -hmm. because okay. that's what you're because you're going to get that much money. Okay. And so then you tell me you break down the 500 into these buckets here. Okay. Got it. Thank yeah. you. Good question. No, that's perfect. Um, we try to make over the years, I've tried to simplify this and really try to make it as easy as we can. Probably the, if I say the biggest mistakes and corrections I have to do, <laughs> it's correcting people's math. <laughs> so they'll say they want 20%, you know, uh, the, their, grand amount and 30%, but then the math doesn't equal out. I usually just go in and I will make those corrections when I, when I do it and, and never even tell you, you'll, you'll get a copy of your final application when it's, it's gone through all the approval. I mean, and usually we're only talking about a few dollars that it, it's off and stuff, but I'm, I'm a little bit anal. So I make sure all everything adds up. I don't want anyone to have, I don't want any of our reviewers on the Southern committee to have any reason to question anything we have in any of our Georgia applications. So um, I go over them with a pretty fine tooth comb. And if I have a question for you, then I reach back out to you. Um, anyone have a, another question before I jump back over to the regular screen? Okay. Let's see. And we were here current slide. All right. So we did the sample application. So how is the funding calculated? Um, what's really nice for you guys, <laughs> um, the ones that are on the call and, and for you newbies who this will be your first time is that, you know, this won't be as hard for you to grasp because it's, you know, it's new. This is how the funding is going to be for you. If you're watching this and you have done it before, um, it is considerably different. And so if you have questions after you view this, um, sure. please just email me and let me know. All right, so the new CG, CGPG formula. So each CTA will receive a dollar and a half per participant, whether that's under adult programs or junior programs, okay? So let's say you run a tennis apprentice program and you have, 10 people who have signed up for Tennis Apprentice for that six weeks. Well, Tennis Apprentice is one of the programs that are eligible for the grant. So it would be $10 times a dollar and a half. That's how much money you would get for that program. Okay, so it's just very straightforward. A dollar and a half per the participant, adult or junior programs. The next um, point, membership is no longer counted for CGPG. Um, that's gonna be the big change for the people who have applied before because um, that was a huge component of how they got funded. So for you guys, it no longer matters. And actually it's what that requirement going out the window is what allowed us to, that you're now eligible to apply for it. So it's a good thing. So next there is a cap. So a cap of 125% 
total participation based on 219 numbers. Now for you first time of applicants, this doesn't really apply to you because you didn't have any 2019 numbers, okay? So however many participants you, you put in that are from qualifying programs, which we'll talk about those in a second, you would get a dollar and a half for each participant that qualifies. You, you, you're golden. Now, for those of you who have applied before, and I'll go over this again with the calculation form so you can see some real examples. From 219, let's say you had 1,000 participants, okay? What that means is for this new grant cycle, the most participants you're going to be able to get credit for times a dollar and a half is going to be 1,250. So with all your programs, if you, you know, knocked it out of the park and let's say you've got 1,400, that's awesome, but you're only going to get funded on 1,250 of those, okay? There's a 125% total participation cap. Um, we will be looking at that calculation form and I'll do some real live calculations on that to show you that that is a big difference. Any questions so far, anybody? Okay. No registration fee required. If you've been, I know a lot of people serve on different committees and are, kind of get wind of different information, even if it wasn't something that your CTA has applied before. Okay. Um, so there was some stuff, uh, stuff, there was some conversation at one point that in surf tennis, if we're putting programs into surf tennis, then the programs needed to have like a $5 minimum registration fee or some other value. Well, that was all Nick. So there's no registration fee required. So we don't, we, no minimum or anything like that. So that's a good thing. So how are we gonna get all this data? So data is collected by three different uh, ways this time around. So for those of you who run and have applied for this grant before, um, that run like our adult league programs or our junior team tennis programs, we will still pull that information from Tennis Link. Okay. So that will come from that. So you don't have to worry about. Um, for everyone else, especially my newbies, most of all of your data will be um, pulled from Surf Tennis. Or for this one year, as of right now, there is a third choice option for this grant cycle. The reason being is, if any of you are familiar with surf tennis, you know there's been some hiccups with it. It's not been quite the smooth rollout. Um, you know, the Southern Committee started talking about this change a, a while back, and they had really hoped by now surf tennis kinks would have been ironed out a lot better. Unfortunately, uh, that's not the case. But we still have a lot of people who are using surf tennis. Several of you on this call, I've already looked and you've got some data in surf tennis already. So uh, I will pull that report from surf tennis. The third choice option, I will go over that. It's basically a jot form um, which you would download an Excel spreadsheet from and you'll be able to enter data into that Excel spreadsheet and upload it to the job form to submit to me for approval. Um, again, that is only an option for this year's grant cycle. Um, I have not heard anything moving forward. I think it really will have to depend on the progress that's made on surf tennis. But as of right now, what we're being told, this is only for this year. So if you're already familiar with surf tennis and you're using it, continue to do that because that's where it's eventually all going to go. Um, it, it'll all be pulled from surf tennis. The next, any questions on that? Okay. Um, again, I mentioned the 500 minimum grant that I, I love that. Cause like I said, we have, even from our CTAs who normally apply, you know, we have some smaller areas and you know, that $500 helps. And if you don't always hit that above that, it's great to know that you've got at least that minimum coming. All right, so let's talk about some of the programs that count for the CGPG grant. So obviously for the people, the CTAs that run our league programs, our adult leagues and our JTT uh, have always counted, they will continue to count. Um, team challenges for the juniors, you know, red ball, whatever color ball, that, those count. Um, social leagues, you know, we have some um, CTAs that run um, 
like the Red Hair League that Atlanta runs. Um, there's a beer league, one of our CTAs run. There's a corporate team tennis league that our, some of our CTAs run. So those social leagues, which may not have ever been counted before because no, they either required membership or they didn't require membership, so you couldn't put them in tennis link, those will count. Cardio tennis will count, but there's a caveat with cardi cardio tennis. You as a CTA, and this is kind of the baseline. If there, um, you'll see, I'm going to skip down to the last one real quick. Other, other programs as approved by the state office. How other programs get approved is that the CTA needs to be the one who is servicing that program. Okay. They need either to have be starting that program, they market that program, um, they can collaborate with, with someone else and support a program, but the CTA has to be involved with the program. Cardio tennis is a prime example of that. Now, there are a lot of facilities who have cardio tennis. It's run by one of the pros that work at that facility, and they do a bank up job, and they just go along their way. And the CTA that you know, has some programming out of that, C out of that facility, you know, they've seen it. They know so-and-so runs it. But that CTA is not involved with that. So that CTA is not, cannot submit cardio tennis numbers. Now, if cardio tennis is something that you as a CTA actively promote and it's on your website, you take in the registration fees for that and then you pay the pro from it. If you've got an involvement in then we can talk about that and you can get credit, credit for cardio tennis. Um, beginners of pro programs, this is a great one because we have a lot of CTAs that are running this. You know, tennis Apprentice, you know, there's a both adult and junior. So if you're running that, you know, there's the Tennis 101 um, that, you know, that national rollout that's very similar to Tennis Apprentice, but some people have decided just to, to, to run that instead. That can be, that can be approved. Um, as far as other programs go, some examples of something that's been um, approved that's not on this list uh, would be like a singles ladder. If you, organization, if you have a singles ladder that you administer and it, that singles ladder you know, runs from March to June and they sign up on it, you totally can get credit for that singles ladder. If you've had 50 people who, who participated in that for the three months, boom, not a problem. You can get credit for that. So what we'll do after this is all over, after I finish the, the presentation and stuff, my ask of you is going to be to one, email me, let me know that, you're el that you are interested in applying for this grant. Um, because you are, since you are new, I do that, that calculation form we're gonna see in a little bit, I'll need to create a new one for you. And I, it'll take me a little bit of time. So I need to know one that you're thinking about Shoot, it. Shoot, Creek Golf Tennis, this is Wanda. <laughs> I'm gonna mute Wanda. Okay, and, and um, okay, got, uh, got sidetracked there. Oh, ask what you do. And then let me know that you want to apply. And then two, send me a list of the programs that you want to see are, if to be eligible, that you're planning to ask for funding for the count for the CGPG grant, okay? And that's why that, that CTA did this, like, hey, we run a singles ladder. It's, we, we run it this month to this month. Is that something that can count? And what I do, um, I've got some of, I've got some leeway. Like I know if you do a singles ladder, I know that can be counted. If I don't know for sure if it's gonna be um, able to count, I've got a, a group at Southern that um, are reviewing these requests. I will send that to them and they will make the determination if we can count the program or not, okay? But the main thing to think of when you think about the programs is, is your CTA, if you are the one who's starting it, if you're marketing, you know, if you're somehow collaborating and supporting it. If it's something you just know that's happening but you're not really involved in it, then that's something that's not gonna count for you that we definitely can talk about these one-on-one. -on -one. All right, how data will be collect collected? Just wanted to go over this, make sure we're all clear. So anybody, no CTAs using Tennis Link, that won't change. And that's not something any for you new people, new applicants, you won't start using Tennis Link all of a sudden. You know, that's mainly for people who have already been using it. You know, I will continue to pull the data from that like I always have. CTA is using serve tennis. That is mainly for um, everyone for this call primarily. Um, 
you know, whatever's in surf tennis, I will pull those reports. Now, for people who are new or existing, because there are new programs now that are qualifying for the grant that haven't, if you're not using surf tennis, you know, there's a third method here. So it's via a jot form. I'm going to show you pieces of that in just a second. So I will send you the link. You will open the jot form. It'll have several questions uh, about the program. Um, you'll have to submit a different job form for each program. So let's say you have a social league and you have a single slider. You would have to do a job form for each of those. On that job form, it's going to be a link where you download the Excel spreadsheet. You probably are using some other platform for the program you're trying to get counted, and that's great. And it probably has a report that you'd love to send me, but you can't. You have to use this Excel spreadsheet. Um, and I'll show you what the headings look at on it. So you'll complete that. You'll upload that on that job form. Once you've, you've completed it, you'll complete all the questions on the job form and then you'll hit submit. It'll then come to me and then I'll make a determination whether immediately or if I have to go to Southern, I'll have to wait for their answer. Any questions on those three? Like I said, I'm getting ready to go over the job form a little bit more detail, but I just wanna make sure everyone kind of understands where I'm getting the data from. Okay. So when I send you the link for the job form, it's gonna pop up like this. Um, this is just the very top of it. I, I don't have all the questions here. They're, they're simple. It's like, what's the date? How many participants? The, the normal type of accountability for our program. But what I wanted to show you here is that second paragraph. Please note, you will, must also use the required Excel template to share participant data. You can download the template here, save on your computer before uploading back into the form. So you get the link, you have to download the Excel spreadsheet, complete the spreadsheet, upload it to the job form, answer all the questions on the job form, and then hit submit, okay? This is what the Excel spreadsheet looks like. So you have to be able to provide the first name of the participant, the last name of the participant, the email, the phone number, and if they, if you know their USTA number, that's great. Okay. Um, now we have the question. I'll just go ahead and throw this out there too. As far as you know, I had someone want to be able to like we had a booth at a festival. We collected names. We had a little mini court, and they hid on the court for five ten minutes. You know, can can we count that? No. Okay, that, that is like a, a one day event that no, there's no follow up. That's no. Now, if you have a clinic that you run that people sign up for, it runs for six weeks. I don't have any problem with that. Okay. But a, like a one day event a festival type thing, that's not going to work. But again, whatever program you're doing, you have to be able to collect all this information. If I get anything that's just got first name and last name, it's going back to you, okay? So you will fill this out and you'll upload that to the job form. So any questions before we get to the fun, fun calculation form, which always makes everyone's head spin, mine included. All right, so let me get us a new share going on. Hold on, let's see sample and share. Okay, so this is what our CGPG grant application form looks like. You'll see lots of rows, lots of columns. Um, and we scroll down, there's a few more things down here. At the very bottom, you'll see, this is just a reminder that no matter what this form comes up with, you would get at least $500, okay? You will not be filling out any of this information this will come to you completed. I pull all the data, I enter it here, and I save it and I send it to you. This little box down here, other, that's if we have anything on this row here or this row here. So basically it's any program that doesn't fall. Remember I mentioned one of the examples was the adult single slider would count. So for that particular CTA, when I did the numbers for that, let's say they had 50, 
it would go under this row and down here i would put you know fun fun singles ladder adult singles ladder 50 people because you could have several so this this other number could be 150. So I would have to list each of the programs down there so they add up. All right, so let's look at this real quick. All kinds of columns and stuff. The first thing I like to look at is the categories. So the, the overall reaching categories now are adults and juniors. So under them, the programs that count. We have under adults, we have the USTA League. We have social leagues. We have beginner tennis. We have cardio tennis, and then we have the other category. Under juniors, we have USTA junior team tennis. And let me make a clarification here because we do have some new people. And I know, um, especially in the Atlanta area, if you are a smaller CTA and you know, you've, your uh, CTA probably helps put together JTT teams to play in JTT, uh, well, they play in the USTA Atlanta League. So even though those JTT teams may be coming out of the, the primary facility that you are based out of or work, you don't get JTT numbers because that goes to UST Atlanta because that is their program. Um, so just, I know that's been confusing sometimes in, in the past. I just wanna make sure we understood that. Um, so and next we have team challenges. We have beginner tennis, whether that's tennis apprentice or something else. We have team tournaments. We have junior circuit tournaments. And then we have other. So, and again, if you have a question, anything I say, just, just feel free to interrupt. On this column, column C, that is just showing how much money you get per registration. The reason this column is there is that it's kind of trying to future-proof the application a little bit. Let's say three years from now, it's decided, we think cardio tennis is the wave of the future. <laughs> you know, cardio tennis has been around forever. They want, they want every CTA running cardio tennis. So what they're going to do on this CGPG grant, instead of a dollar and a half, let's, let's offer them $5 for every participant. That's why they have this column that is sometime down the road, if they want to come and change the value for a particular column, it's already kind of built in and it, it won't change. But for right now, across the board, it's a dollar and a half for any of our participants. Um, the next three columns here are, are great information. For you new guys, not so much because you don't have any historical data. Uh, but for those of you who are applying um, who've applied before, all your previous data will be here. And so it, uh, you always had three years worth of data. Column G, that is where we're going to put the results for this grant. These are the, the numbers that are going, going to go in to help us get our funding number. And then, then just um, column H is just telling us what the, month, the amount that increased. Again, for those of you who have applied before and have historical data, your um, the, the money that you can receive and that 125% participation cap will be based on your 2019 results. Again, just because of how the pandemic affected our 2020 results. And then column I, this is gonna compute our, pay, our payout for us, okay? At the very end, you're gonna see where it says actual payout. And so we're going to play with these numbers some right now. So this is ABC Community Tennis Association. They've obviously applied before. In 2018, they had 400 adults and they had 400 juniors. 2019, they had 500 adults and 500 juniors. 2020, the pandemic came. Things got all messed up. Program stopped. So they only had 200 adults and 200 juniors. Okay. So this is what we're looking at before we look at anything of what they've done this year. So you'll see down here on row 18, the total registrations for 2019 is 1,000 because they had 500 adults and 500 juniors. Row 19 now tells me the maximum registrations that can be counted for this grant cycle. So this is that 
25, 125% participation max. So the max amount they can get funded for now is 1,250 participants. Okay, so 20 would be the total registrations. 21, this is a great column to look at. No matter what you do, if you blow out, if the CTA blows out every single category here exponentially, just gang blockbusters, whatever, the most money they're going to be able to receive is $1,875. That's because we have 125% max. But all is not lost. You're like, oh my God, they did all that great work and they're not being awarded for it. True, for this particular grant cycle, it is maxed out. But what's gonna happen next year is those numbers become the new baseline and they'll be eligible for 125% of those numbers. So it'll raise your, your, your cap eventually. But again, for this particular grant cycle, they're going to be stopped at 1250 for 1875. So let's play, let's, let's, let's play around with this. So for total adults, let's say they are doing great. The numbers are back at 2019. They have surpassed that. So they have gotten 700 total adults. Okay. And the juniors, the same thing. The juniors did great. They've gotten 700 juniors. Okay. So total registrations is 1400 okay but again the max they can do is only 1250 so if they were to have if they would have gotten funded on the 1400 they would have received 2100 dollars. but unfortunately our max payout kicked in so our actual payout says 1875 all right now let's look at let's look at it differently. Let's say, unfortunately, they still have not recovered from 2020. So they're still at 200 adults and still at 200 juniors. Okay. So they've got 400, 400 um, participants now. So 400 times a dollar and a half is 600. 1875 was our max. That doesn't come into play now. So their actual payout will be, be $600. Let's say it was even worse than that. Their board left. No one wants to come out. It's just horrible. They've, they had 25 adults and they didn't have any children. Okay, you need no, no juniors. So total registrations, they would only get paid 37.50. Max payout 1875. So actual payout is 3750. But that's not necessarily true now, is it? Why? Because you're eligible for this grant. At a minimum, you will get $500. So this is the case where this actual payout number, even though it says 3750, you will get the $500. Okay? So you'll get that no matter what questions would anyone is there another scenario somebody wants me to put in i try to give one that exceeded the max payout one that was under the max payout this is pretty much what it's going to look like all right i will take silence as we're going we will go back to our powerpoint and we are done. So before we sign off, does anyone have any questions? I know it was a lot of information. You're seeing this for the very first time. I will send all of this out. Um, again, I'll send the recording of this to all of you. And um, so you can feel, feel, feel free to watch it again. Feel free to share it with your board. If you have a grant writer who, and if you're not that person who will be doing this and really needs to understand it, um, share it with them. Feel free to reach out to me. Again, my ask of you now is you'll need to let me send me an email and let me know if you are planning to apply for the grant. That way I can create the calculation form for you. And two, what programs you are planning to submit. Okay. I think someone put a chat in. Oh, thank you, Katrina. 
Um, all right, so I'm actually going to stop the share, but don't hang up yet. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna stop the share and I'm gonna stop the recording. Again, once you receive this and watch it, if you wanna call me, feel free to do so, but I'm going to stop.